All right, today we're going to look at making a profit and loss statement. Let's say you start with some raw data like this, and your boss wants you to turn this into a profit and loss statement. So you might not know where to start, where to go from um, ground zero on this. So let's just run through at least one way you could do this. So first off, let's look at what would be income and what would be expenses. On this one, we pretty much just got one source of income. We're going to go ahead and color code this. And all the rest of these are expenses. So now, one way you could do this is just to simply to list the income and then subtract all expenses and come up with your profit. Now, traditionally on bookkeeping, cost of goods is actually taken out of the top and then the rest of the expenses taken out separately. So that's how we're going to do it today. You could simplify this if you don't need to worry about that in your profit and loss. So let's go ahead and start with just a blank tab right here. Uh, I'm going to make it maybe look a little nicer. Let's just do some stuff here. Um, you'll see in a second what I'm going to do. So 15. And I'm going to do the same thing. Let's get rid of a couple here. Make this 15. That's 30. And let's make this 30. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let's come down a little bit and make a little box. And actually, let me make this box double click witness and put a little border color around this. And then we'll build our profit and loss and then do a little more on this at that point in time. All right, and then I'd like to get rid of any extra rows we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll the bottom, shift click, and delete these rows. So now we got a little box to work with. I'll show this a little bit. And we can start to go on this. So let's just start with 2021 profit and loss. Let's go ahead, and I like this font, baby loss new. And if you don't have it and you want to use it, just go to more fonts, search for Big Loss New. So let's go ahead and pick that. Like maybe doing 24. I'm going to go ahead and merge these cells and then just do a quick background color like that. All right. So I'm going to put my categories over here. My Revenue, etc. So then I'll do months. I'm just going to go ahead and write them out. February. And then from here, Google should be able to pick up what I'm doing. So I'll scroll over a little bit. There's the right end of the year. All right. And then year end for the year total. So now I can go ahead and get rid of these extra couple cells. And then I'm actually going to make these a little bit narrower. Let's just say 80 for now. Now we can see this whole thing in the view. Go ahead and grab that Bayboss new again. Have a little formatting there. Maybe I'll just go ahead and call this income. And do a little highlight. Alright, we're actually going to get rid of it on here. And select that font for. Alrighty. Go ahead and grab some border. Alright, now we're coming along. Just play around with it a little bit. So you can play around with this as much as little as you want. I'm gonna call it quits here in a second. Grab some white. There we go. So let's go ahead and grab our revenue. So I'm just going to call this, you can call it gross revenue, revenue, whatever makes sense in the context that you're using it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this data. Before I do anything with it, let me get rid of that highline just so it doesn't mess me up. So January, December, if I take this and paste transposed, it's going to go ahead and throw it in there like that. Let's take our cost of goods and returns. Do the same thing. All 
All right. So now from here, we'll get our gross profit. Let me just turn 10 there. So this is our first formula. Sum equals d7 minus d8. Go ahead and drag this over. I'll drag it all the way over because we're going to capture this too. Now let's do our other one to sum up our year. And there we go, like that. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to go ahead and add just a quick border here. Quick border here. We'll continue. We'll add some more highlighting and formatting later. So now we're to expenses. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Call this one expenses. And change my highlighting to a little bit of light red here. I don't like to go super bright. It gets kind of obnoxious. I'll just show you real quick here. I've seen some people do this, and this just looks... It's eye-catching, but it's kind of obnoxious to my mind. So I like doing some more, a little more subtle. And so I'm going to go ahead and grab these payroll, rent, utilities, insurance, and MISC. Paste post, and it did grab that color, as you can see there. But that's OK. Let's go ahead and do a little formatting here. Let me add some white. All right. So I can actually take this whole section and paste transposed. And you can double check, make sure. Payroll, all those 3,000 amounts. See there? Payroll, 3,000 amounts. Rent, 950. So that all looks like it got in there okay. There are miscellaneous, some small amounts there. All right. So let's do total expenses and sum that up. I can spell correctly. And we're going to add these up. Drag this over. And let's do our other sum over here as well. So I can actually just copy and paste this formula. And those references will update, those cell references. And throw that down there. And pull this down. And you can see that reference is now on row 15. So it can, it'll conveniently show you highlight what your formula is doing. So this is adding up D, D15 through O15. And let me go ahead and add some border here. And border here. Looks like we got one more thing we need to do is, so we have our income minus our cost of goods for our gross profit. And we got our expenses, total expenses. So now we need our net profit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab this and we'll call this profit. And maybe change to a little darker green. Get rid of this. And net profit. So this one's going to be sum. And we want the gross profit minus our expenses. And drag that all the way over. And now we can do our highlighting and formatting. What? So one of the things I like to do is I like to use Calibri on these numbers. It just helps them. Uh, it takes a little less room to do it that way in the cell. And it's a little more horizontally efficient, I would say. Um, you can see that it gets a little smaller. And I think it looks more pleasing with numbers than um, Google's default Arial. So let me just do some resizing here. Let me change this, make these a little bigger. All right. Now let's do some quick formatting, and then um, we'll go ahead and make a chart for this. Just so you can see what that'll look like. And how to do that on this. And 14. Vertical aligned. Check this. Let's go ahead and make this green. And then I'm gonna go ahead and 
highlight these. Let me make the screen too. Light green. Good. Light green. And dark green. Darker green. So if you notice, I haven't finished it here yet, but uh, I'm going to leave these cells white just to show that that is where the data is getting entered. Just to make it clear where we can enter data and where is formulas, where the formulas are living. So these formulas are living in this in these cells. So I'm going to go ahead and leave um, those with the highlighting just to make it so people aren't accidentally changing the numbers. So next I'm going to go ahead and remove these grid lines. And you can see instantly we have a pretty clean look now. Let me go to white. You're going to see that in there. So go to medium. Go ahead and pull that down in here. This one's formulas. So let's go ahead and add that there. So we can change this to white. Something like that. Maybe do the white over here as well. And in here. And in here. Go ahead and make this smaller. Oh, and this one's green. I really wanted this one to be red. Maybe a little darker on that one. Alright, I'm going to make sure that I got the number formatting correctly. Alright, so this one I made it 11. I think 10 looks a little better. Alright, so these look really close here, so I'm going to add a space. Just any of these. Looks like these already have a space. All right, it's now we're looking pretty good for a quick effort. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of these extra cells here. And let's just go ahead and make that chart. So let me go ahead and reset this 30. Then I'm going to add some more rows here. Let's just add maybe 30 rows. Then I'm going to select this data range. I'm not going to include your total because it's going to mess up my charts going to add a really big number at the end. So you can see I'm kind of mixed up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and switch rows and columns. I've got a mess over here so I'm actually going to do is remove all the series first and then I'm going to go ahead and add them back manually. So let's just do gross revenue. Let's do gross profit, total expenses, and net profit. And then I like to get rid of the border a lot, so you can do whatever looks good to you. Let's drag this down here. Make this wider. A little deeper. So let's see what we've got going on here. Turn style. Domain labels. Looks like it's not picking me up. Let's do C6. There we go. So now we've got our labels. And it's pretty well laid out, so we can kind of see at a quick glance what's going on. I think we'll call it good for that for right now. We're going to make another video here in a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to take some other data, maybe have some data with some dates, and how to automatically bring it into a monthly or a yearly profit and loss. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments, and we'll see you later. Thank you.